Good afternoon, lovely people, and welcome along to another edition of the Design Radio Show with me, Miles. Beginning this week with a look at the new campus, the new HQ for Apple in Cupertino, California. Now, this is a giant behemoth of a building, which means it's huge, which you might expect, I would suppose, from uh, probably the most financially successful computer company of all time. Now, this building is uh, something like eight years in the gestation. That's, you know, from concept to near completion now. Uh, Originally, Steve Jobs approached Sir Norman Foster back in 2009. So that's like eight years, yeah. Um, Now, as you can see, this is a very futuristic sort of spaceship of a building. Uh, In fact, it's been nicknamed as such already, uh, as well as things like The Ring and uh, what else? And as well as it being huge, it, the cost was huge. It's like $5 billion thereabouts, which is an awful uh, lot of uh, iPads and iPhones. Well, maybe 50 or so. <laughs> Given uh, how much Apple charges for this stuff, but I guess this is the you know reason they're able to afford such an expensive building, right? Anyway, um, as I say, it's nearing completion. Some of the employees are moving in already. Uh, It's super high tech, as you would expect from Foster and Partners. Uh, It features a state-of-the-art kind of solar panel, toroidal, scientifically designed curved roof. Uh, it features drought resistant trees uh, as you can see here this being California it doesn't rain much apparently so uh, they need trees that can survive in the landscaping um, and yeah, what else? Uh, inside the office's feature, uh, uh, timber panelled finishes, which uh, the timber was selected uh, by Steve Jobs to be harvested in midwinter so as to have a low sap content, I think, because, you know, heavens above, you don't want wood that's too sappy now, do you? This isn't. Microsoft after all but anyway huge and usually impressive well uh, not everyone thinks so I mean this is uh, this is the review over at Wired uh, if you care about cities Apple's new campus sucks hmm so yeah architectural reviews are not always the most entertaining of reads uh, let's be honest but This one is, this is, uh, and it makes some very good points. I mean, he begins by, uh, you know, almost going into sort of Donald Trump type speech mode. Uh, The new new headquarters, Apple building is in Cupertino, has the absolute best door handles, the greatest. The greatest? They are precision milled aluminium rails that attach to glass bolts. Uh, glass doors are either sliding and swinging alike with no visible bolts. Everything in this building is the best. The toroid glass of the roof curves scientifically to shed rainwater. And uh, yeah, and he talks about the trees and the panels and stuff that I've uh, just been yabbering on about myself. But then he gets into the, the, uh, the more uh, serious kind of point that actually 
you know, what the architects have done here is kind of retrograde. This is an inward looking building with contempt for the city where it lives and cities in general. Uh, people rightly credit Apple for defining the look and feel of the future with its computers and its phones, which seem like science fiction. But by building a mega headquarters straight out of the middle of the last century, Apple has ex exacerbated the already serious problems endemic to 21st century suburbs. Uh, Apple Park is an anachronism wrapped in glass tucked into a neighborhood. Well, wow, harsh words indeed, and, and uh, you know, this has been picked up in various other sectors of the design press, including Dizine, which uh, pretty much ran this, this article uh, verbatim. Uh, and uh, my favorite part, my favorite quote from, from this, he, he ends more or less by saying that, uh, you know, by putting, the, by putting form factor aside, the best and smartest designers and architects in the world could have tried something new. Instead, it produced a building roughly the shape of a navel and then gazed into it. Uh, it may look like a circle, but it's actually a pyramid, uh, a monument more suited to a vanished past than a complicated future. So harsh words. Uh, do you agree with them? Uh, what do you think of this this building? Uh, is it representative of the future of architecture, or uh, is it really, as uh, Adam Rogers says, uh, a monument more suited to a vanished past than a complicated future? Let us know in your comments below be interested to hear what you have to say now speaking of the future and uh, also more large round buildings uh, this time with a marble in the middle by the looks of it this is the Kazakhstan Expo 2017 which is happening now actually has just begun uh, the 10th of, runs from the 10th of June to the 10th of September in Kazakhstan, of, of all places. Not the country I've ever visited, but this uh, you know, could be worth a visit by the look of it. Um, and now I'm gonna just focus, being a Brit, I'm focusing on the UK uh, pavilion, which is um, being designed uh, by Asif Khan. And he's uh, collaborated with uh, the musician Brian Eno, Brian Eno, of course, famous for his work with, amongst others, David Bowie and uh, U2. And uh, also the professor of astrophysics, Catherine Hamans. Now, I don't really, to be honest, know much about her, but uh, she's been brought in as a consultant on developing the scientific context. Um, now, this building, it's not quite as expensive as the uh, Apple HQ. It's still two million pounds though, so not small beer for a temporary pavilion. Um, it features, it says, uh, a multi, it will be a multi-sensory experience involving film, technology, sound and animation, exploring the origins and energy and culminating in a 360 degree computer generated universal landscape with an illuminated structure at its center inspired by human ingenuity oh sounds impressive uh, I couldn't get any video footage of this uh, pavilion unfortunately which uh, I think might have done it more justice perhaps than uh, than these these uh, photos on the uh, eventstrade.gov.uk uh, website but either way it looks you know definitely worth exploring um, apparently the visitor will learn about UK discoveries that have changed the way people connect and communicate with each other from steam locomotion 
through the Turbo Jet to the, the World Wide Web. Uh, visitors will be introduced to the latest discovery of the advanced material graphene by UK scientists, which has the potential to radically alter the way that we produce and consume energy. Wow, exciting stuff. That's, so that's the UK Pavilion. Over in Kazakhstan, all very futuristic. Now, staying with the future, did you like that segue there? We're moving into <laughs> the science fiction future that is the uh, current exhibition being held at the Barbican Centre in London. Uh, this is Into the Unknown. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording, the Barbican Centre website is down. Uh, in fact, it's been down several times over the course of my uh, research into this vlog for the past few days. So, Barbican Centre, uh, people are, I'm sure, like myself, wanting to book tickets to this exhibition. Uh, which looks amazing, but uh, cannot at the moment. So yeah, sort it out, please. Anyway, uh, the exhibition, as I say, as you guessed, is is uh, sci-fi based. Um, it features. Let me just read to you from the blurb, which I did manage to download. Uh, a little earlier on my other laptop it says uh, from the 19th century cabinet of curiosities to the vastness of space through future cities and into the inner landscapes of human per perception okay so you get the gist uh, you can uncover the mysterious lands of Jules Verne Ray Harryhausen Soviet visions of space alongside immersive work by Soda Jerk and a gallery of blockbusters including Star Trek and Interstellar, dystopian worlds from Robert Atwood 28 Days Later and uh, the transformation mutation of the body through the eyes of uh, Jack Kirby and Ex Machina, one of my favourite films from uh, 2015. So this exhibition was curated by the historian and writer Patrick Geiger. I wonder if it's related to HR, the uh, designer, the artist behind uh, Alien. Probably not, but anyway. Um, so this festival exhibition consists of more than 800 works, some of many of which have been, never been seen in the UK before. Uh, includes artwork from Isaac Julian, Larissa Sansa and Conrad Shaw Cross and an installation from the creators of Black Mirror. Black Mirror, I loved that series from Netflix. Uh, if you haven't, I highly recommend you check out Black Mirror. Anyway, that's Into the Unknown from, the, uh, from now uh, until when is it on? Uh, let me just check. 3rd of June to the 1st of September, 2017. So yeah, that's uh, definitely one I'm going to be visiting when I next visit London. Uh, now, on a rather more sombre note, I don't know if you caught this in, it's made the mainstream media, this is from the Telegraph website, this is the, uh, the Doomsday Arctic Seed Vault, which uh, was designed ostensibly designed to be able to withstand a, you know, a, a doomsday scenario. Um, uh, it was built you know, deep into the side of a mountain in uh, Norway uh, and it's basically designed to contain the seeds of pretty much every species of plant on the planet, or as many as they could harvest, uh, and protect them from, from disaster. Um, but what actually happened is that 
climate change now being uh, a definite reality, no matter what you might think, Mr. Trump. The greatest... Um, so this has caused the permafrost around this vault to actually melt uh, and flood the, uh, the tunnel entrance. Um, now, the good news is that it hasn't actually uh, harmed, damaged the seeds in any way. I mean, this was uh, a building that was designed to be able to with withstand uh, asteroid strikes and nuclear wars. You know, so you'd think that uh, a bit of flooding uh, might have been something they would, would have considered, and, and perhaps they did, because as I say, so far it, see, it seems that uh, everything's okay, but, you know, this is now going to cause them to rethink and revisit the design and uh, upgrade certain aspects of it at a cost of several million pounds if you see so yeah and this is because you know temperatures are rising much more than than everybody thought possible uh, and faster you know, temperatures have risen more than previously imagined the arctic shattered heat records in the past year as unusually warm uh, triggered massive melting of ice and snow and a late autumn freeze. So yes, uh, that's kind of worrying, and that's that's a bit of a uh, a bit of a failure, I suppose. Now, speaking of uh, failures, let's have a look at the latest museum to open in Sweden this past week or so. Uh, this is the Swedish Museum of Failure, which contains. A spectacular catalogue of uh, the world's worst innovations, it says. Now, Samuel West is the, the guy behind this. He's a psychologist and a researcher uh, who's been collecting this kind of stuff for uh, several years, it would seem. <laughs> and uh, I want to get this video to play. Please play. Please play. What's happened to you? This is a failure of uh, my own technology here. There we go. That's full screen now. So let's play this. See if we can. I'm just going to leave you to this for a moment. The greatest Failure, but that video to launch at the beginning of, of 
my piece on this, but it definitely looks uh, interesting, an interesting idea that, that, that we can actually learn from our failures. Now then, this guy wasn't a failure, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Frank O'Dwight, one of the most successful of American architects, and he uh, was born 150 years ago last week. Happy birthday, Mr. Frank Wright. Uh, and there are lots of events uh, happening in his honor. Uh, most of them, unfortunately, in America. Uh, this is like the Museum of Modern Art. And, uh, in Guggenheim, New York, and others. I mean, of course, you know, in front of most of the Frank Wright's. Oh, in the States. But anyway, this site here, franklloydwright.org, has the complete list. And uh, I would highly recommend. I've visited a few Frank Lloyd Wright buildings around about Chicago. And uh, 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 well worth well worth a visit. Now, in honour of his 150th, Lego have actually uh, created a new kit based on the Guggenheim Museum, which uh, I'm definitely going to be getting this for my, my son, well, for my son, for me, <laughs> let's be honest. So, uh, I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to that one. Uh, now, it's graduate design show time, around about this time of year, and uh, Design Week has a list of, uh, well it actually has them all, but it also lists the kind of the top 10 if you believe in such things, including uh, Bournemouth University, where I once taught, and Manchester School of Arts, where I once graduated from, and Leeds, where I was visiting in Glasgow, where I also visited, and the University of Arts in London.
play now. Now, this being an awful lot of bad news around lately, I'm sure I don't need to tell you. Um, and I'm not going to dwell on that. Instead, I'm going to offer this as an antidote if you haven't seen it already. This is the Happy Film, which is uh, a film by uh, Stefan Sagmeister, and he is a graphic designer and uh, quite renowned in the world of design. I'm not going to play this trailer through because I'm going to go over my own music, voiceover, you see, I can't, but anyway. I think I need to probably record this bit again <laughs> and come up with a different, uh, different, uh, a different piece of video to accompany. Let's just find that now. Actually, I did have one. I had the YouTube. Uh, da 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 da. The happy film titles. try this again from just here because this is cool so where were we we were on our golden egg anyway that's about it for me for this week uh, I'm just gonna leave you with something it's a bit of an antidote to all the bad news that's been around of late, which I'm not going to dwell on here, but as an antidote, I'm going to offer you this. Um, if you haven't seen... Uh, this film's been kicking around for a while, actually. This is the Happy Film. Now, this is a film by uh, the Austrian graphic designer, uh, Stefan Sagmeister. It started out as a kind of just a pet project really and, and then grew into something more and uh, yeah, occupied the better part of his life for a couple of years I think anyway it's now doing the rounds at uh, film festivals and things and is touring uh, the UK so if you're feeling a bit glum about things at the moment this is uh, this is a way to go and cheer yourself up and that's about it for uh, me from the design radio show for this week hope you've enjoyed it hope I've picked a couple of things that have sparked your interest or attention let me know in the comments below and uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and until the next time take care of yourselves be good to one another bye bye it's